Well, that thing was doing a lot of waving. Maybe it's dead. Looks like a... Well, for a second I thought bamboo skeleton, but I don't actually see the... Um, yeah, there's no polyps on it. It looks like it's just a stalk. It is. It was a bamboo, though, I think. You can see some of the lines, but right. I don't know. I think I see a... I don't know if that's actually just, like, debris on it. Okay. There's a, oh, thanks. To the right, there's a uh, stocked sponge. Oh, wait. Do you guys see the worm? Oh. Mm -hmm. No. No. Worm? Thought, yeah. thought I just saw something moving, yeah. Like, right here? Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You scared it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, little one. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, we got to go. Yep. yep. Um, so you might want to consider going back down to point yeah. two because it's no, quite quick okay. like this, Something. right? Yeah. <laughs> there was a... Uh, yeah, we can't go for that. Especially Caliphagus or Bolosoma in the background. Mm -hmm. Does look like Caliphagus. I always wonder how old these dead things are. Mm hmm. How long they've been there. Um, are we able to get. Oh, where is Let it? Let us know when you're back up ahead. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. There's something like right. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sponge <laughs> up there yep. under the yellow one. Go ahead and zoom. That Ooh. looks like a sacocalyx. Ooh, that's pretty. I haven't seen any of that yet. No. They look like flowers. Those I are say, yeah, it looks like a flower from the top. Sacocalyx. Just like translucent flowers. Oh, yeah, those are beautiful. Can you help me spell that real quick? Um, yeah, S-A-C. S A C O. That's good there. Thank you, P Hannaford. H okay, full wide. Mm -hmm. A. Oh, L Y X, and there's actually two C's. And then X. No S. No S. Mm -hmm. No S. Oh, just a couple X. different X. stock sponges here. Perfect. Thank you. We might actually start seeing an interesting amount of sponges. There's mm -hmm. something yeah, over there's here a bigger too. One, yeah. Another one of those tall pharanematids, I think. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and Actually, zoom. Looks like it's something colonized on something else. I think it's a pharanematid or, sponge. Oh, actually, yeah. It's so thick. There's a huge attachment base. So I guess there are morphs of polyopagon that look like this, even though I'm used to seeing very different shapes. But certainly some pharaonemonid. You can see the pistol threads at the bottom a little too. That's good. Thanks. Okay, full wide. Wow. Interesting, spongy. Yeah. Sponges. I'm always curious as to what drives more sponge density and diversity versus more coral yeah. density and diversity. It's a good question. Because we've kind of, there's kind of been a pattern of us seeing like when there's a lot of, when there's high diversity of sponges and not really many corals, mm -hmm. and also the opposite case. Right. So, something is different. I don't know, thinking like both of, both of them can withstand a decent bit of yeah. current and uh, 18 you know, have PhDs similar like <laughs> suspension feeding. Yeah. Or a, yeah, feeding whatever flies by with either the polyps or, or by filtering it through their bodies. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's why I'm like, hmm, what's what's changing between the two? Why is one better in some places than the others? Because we are seeing some corals, just not many. And from what it seems like, only a couple types. But can't really confirm because we haven't really seen many yet. Oh, nope. shrimp. I was just looking up a uh, paper from Science Direct yeah, that uh, suggests... Maybe come out a little bit on that. There's so mm -hmm. much layback. What's going on here? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, a study suggests... Yeah, I was looking at that. We're, we're like deep and not that deep, right? No. Oh. Humor me and just stop uh, at the end of the ship move. Just let it stop and just mm -hmm. see how fast these come back in. Because that's okay. pretty excessive now. Yeah. yeah. And I, I kind of want to check it before watch change as well. I don't want to hand them bag <laughs> of snakes. What does layback mean? So on the screen there on high pack, how you can see mm -hmm. that Hercules and Atalanta are behind the ship aways. It's always like mm -hmm. that. They're always kind of dragging not, okay. a little. Mm -hmm. But that's particularly far for the depth that we're at. Yeah, huh. it's about 125 meters. Oh, wow. Okay. It's very far. Got it. So there's a current somewhere, yeah. right? Like, I'm not feeling it on the south, but there's a but lot of current dragging them back there. Mid. This is a cool one. This is a that weird is cool. looking. Okay, uh, zoom in. Foldy sponge. Ooh, that's beautiful. Ooh. Oh, nice. wow. This is fascinating. Is that just on the rock? It looks like uh, like one of like uh, like the sculptures. upper rock. I think. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's stock. Like hanging down. Yeah. That also looks like a euplectellid. It almost looks like a weird Atlanticella, but I've never seen it. Let me see. Like, like curling in. into itself. Yeah. Looks like a paper towel that's folded on itself. <laughs> Giant clam. Very cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, and there's a um, sea cucumber in the background. Oh. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. I see it there. Oh, yeah. Do you want to see that? Uh, maybe real quick. Oh, wow. Look at that little fella. Yeah. So why is it that some are kind of like zoom. pinkish, red, some are like purple, and then the one that we saw like the other day was like kind of like yellowish? I would assume it just depends on what they eat, really. Mm. Uh, Maybe it's a camouflage? Yeah, I don't know. Again, mm -hmm. with the red, similar to what Megan was mentioning earlier. Okay. Yeah. The well, others are often are just clear, there. translucent. And there's some species that change through their life of sea cucumbers. Mm, so they're smaller, right. they're kind of one color, and, and they get bigger, they're another. But interesting. Right, right. Probably just more concentration of so some So it's quite steep agenda. here for a moment. Mm. Yep. So I'm just going to blast past this. This is all. Fortunately. That's steeper right. than expected. Yeah. I think it's just that little bit. Yeah, we're supposed to be heading towards a, like a flat lip, but huh. I'm curious what the substrate will look like up there, and also, you know, if peering peering to the other side, what that looks like. Yeah. So we stop. We finished our ship move. Yeah, I just want to see like what what rate the vehicles fall back in toward the ship here. That's another sponge. You want to look at this? Yes, please. Yeah. Looks like a stock with some stars on it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and zoom in. Bulby at the top. So it's oh a yeah, sponge. sponge. Sponge with a bunch of uh, <laughs> brittle or snake stars. They're oh, all falling wow. stars. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry. Falling stars. Falling stars, yeah.
All right, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Good catch. TNC little sponges. Yeah. It's cool though. Quite some diversity of sponges. Yeah. And I think these, yeah, those sea stars had spikes. Of, of it seems of like. Ophiroids, maybe brittle yeah. stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not much around it. <laughs> So what's the difference in the sediment that we're looking at? How it has that kind of like texture to it, right? There's the more rocky bit, and then I'm assuming that darker bit, is that maybe more organic? What do we think? Yeah, hard to say if there's some kind of uh, organic layer on top. Or maybe it's just gravel, gravelly. I don't know, it looks really fuzzy. Oh, is it? Like what in the still cam, it looks super fuzzy. That's why I'm curious if it's organic. Maybe not in this pattern, but some spots it's where it's been bioturbated. Mm -hmm. You know, something's gone through and kind of stirred it up and yeah. you are seeing mm -hmm. a different a different look at it, whether mm -hmm. that's chemical or textural. It'd be really easy to spot where a sea cucumber went in these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow just yeah are we starting to swing back in slowly oh, a but bit. Uh, it's not yeah. much just start start moving ahead again and keep it at point two okay there has to be a current up there doing yeah. That. yeah um yeah what this. are those these little things poking out go ahead and zoom A little sticky uppy. But of what? Oh, there's an Ooh. ophiroid hidden in there. Oh, yeah. And uh, maybe a, <coughs> oh, a hydroid like a, polyp yeah. or something. On a dead something or another yeah. sponge stock. Cool. Oh, what's that? Oh, look at that one moving. And then you and still oh. can see like a tiny little sponge. That's another. Yeah, and then where is that? Oh, you're right, but what's it carrying? It <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I don't even really see it in the camera. Something. Do you have any more zoom, that? or is that it? Yeah, uh, uh, we um, did. That's all I got. What? Oh, so that's weird. Something. What's happening there? It's wearing it's like a hat. got a little hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where its mouth is. So that's not what its like stomach looks like, right? No. <laughs> Also, the mouth would be on the underside. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right. I don't know. Okay. Huh. All right. Fun. Thanks. Oh, what? The world may never know. Jaunty cat. Very interesting stuff down here. Maybe I had mm. a very large meal the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So here's a question from the chat. Um, why do brittle stars sometimes attach themselves to sponges? Like, why do they pick them as their targets? Good question. Um, probably also wanting to get up higher. Um, I'm trying to remember how brittle stars feed if they're catching things in their arms. Because mm -hmm. uh, if so, you know, that would be the same motivation as everything else for wanting to get up higher. Yeah, and I think there's some species that are kind of specialists and some that aren't, and I'm not even sure we know enough to answer the question yet. It's right. a super good question for folks, like one of those, we don't know. Look forward to the <coughs> time when we can figure it out. Another yeah, big so shrimp. There, so just confirming this for myself, brittle stars eat in different ways. So there are some brittle stars that are more, um, particulate feeders living on the on the sediment bottom and then there are others that uh, are suspension feeders so I would imagine that of course the suspension feeding brittle stars are the ones that 
probably have some associations with with fauna that provides structure and elevation, and the others are the ones that we see on um, the seafloor. Oh, no, never mind. That's a big shrimp. And yeah, they they catch things in their arms and then transport it to their mouths with the with mucus strands. Woohoo, mucus strands! <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of inverts use kind of mu mucus strands that they then sticky stuff transport to their mouths. I feel like that that would be a bingo. If people are playing bingo, which you can download bingo cards. Uh -huh. Oh my god, we do have them, a bingo card. There we have bioturbation yes. and we but have mucus strand. Yes. <laughs> We have bingo on here? There, yeah, there's Nautilus bingo, bingo on Nautilus Live and their education resources. Oh Go follow along. <laughs> Try and get the I team wanna know to what say else the is bingo on there. Yeah. yeah. It's worth checking out. It's they, We have a lot of great resources on our education tab. Ooh, especially there's for a teachers. heteropolypus. Mm -hmm. Mushroom coral. Want to zoom? Sure. sure. Quick. Go ahead. Is it? I think so. Yeah. Just a skinny one. Orange color. Yeah, usually the Tahi notice are that like longer stocked and lighter orange, but I don't, this one's so small, it's hard to tell right. from the classic shape. Yeah. All right, we're good, thank you. Okay, full wide. Pretty. A few other dead stalks out there. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, I have a question for the uh, ROV team if you're available. Sure. Yeah, so. Is that a tripod um, fish? It looks yeah. like. Yeah. What kind of uh, sensors and cameras and lenses does the uh, ROVs have? What kind of cameras and lenses? Yeah. Um, the main one on uh, Hercules, and was uh, we oh, also yeah. have one on Argus as well, is... Uh, go ahead and zoom in there. Uh, they're called a Zeus Plus camera by... Insight Pacific. That was the gold standard, and still is uh, the gold standard. In in that's all. It's a it's oh. it's a little bit old, and I think there's a, a kind of a comparable 4K solution being developed now. But it's only in 1080p, but it's a broadcast quality camera, um, and that's been wow. really the best thing going uh, for many many years now. And they have a little a smaller version of it. Um, different camera, but uh, the Mini Zeus, which is Atalanta's camera, those have been real strong, high-performing cameras in the ocean science community. Which in the ocean science community is pretty, you know, the highest quality of like video on ROV. Um, and the other cameras, I don't know if we ever send any of them out. They're a much lower quality, what we call a tooling camera. Um, we have those uh, all over the vehicle for different things. And then uh, I don't know much. I can't speak to the glass very much, but the on the on the Zeus and the Mini Zeus, they have proper glass domes. Um, uh, they're you know they're very high quality. The tooling cameras are more of like a flat front. And then we've got some other additions like the uh, the DSC camera. Um, maybe I'm not sure if somebody in the back might speak to what exactly that camera is. I think there are sort of an yeah. SLR in a box kind of thing. Yeah, but, uh, Sony A7 III. Yeah. Uh, in a in a deep sea rated housing. So yeah. kind of like a high quality camera you might use yourself, but then put into a deep sea housing so we can use it underwater at depth. And it's very fun to use. Yep, that's yeah. Sarah's job on this watch. <laughs> Sarah is the still cam operator. <laughs> and occasional. Yeah. I just got <laughs> no, you had a photographer on this one. It's like generally speaking, you take a off the shelf high qual like a c 
camera, obviously, can have of any That's quality, true. right? Yeah. You get a oh, very no, high quality so camera and put it in a box. But then you've got to do the uh, the dome, the glass solution is actually a bit of a... That's a difficult thing, and I think people that are very good at that, uh, that's a hard piece. If you don't have a optically kind of corrected dome on the front, I don't think you get anywhere near a real yeah, nice high quality. Yeah, got swimmers. That might be another oh. Aristeid, like what There's we were seeing yesterday. There's a plus Small fauna, yeah. Was it the shrimp you were after? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to look at the Aristeid. Those big legs. Oh, yeah, I love watching them swim. Oh, oh. They have kind of... Paddles. Oh, and then there's oh. a um, there's a, a oh, tube worm. Hey, buddy. I think that's a tube worm. Or no. Looks like a tiny mushroom coral. Yeah. Oh, and then something under it. Oh, a squat lobster, <laughs> guarding the mushroom coral. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. All right, that's good there. Thanks. So now we're up. Whoopi, if you want to note for us oh, that we're wow. on top of this feature now. So it's kind of... Oh, Lilo, look at this. ...sandier and flattened out a little. Whoa. A whole bunch of stuff oh, that we man. just passed over. Oh, and still, wow. Cam, you can see, like, it looks like boring, flat sand, nothing to see here. But when Super you small. when you see from that angle, this tiny stuff, it looks like black coral, maybe? Or I don't know what these are. I don't are. know what that one is. Yeah, these All these tiny like branching branching white little. little organisms and then off in the distance as well yeah all over so the place possibly a bellopathies over here yeah and they're all like kind of translucent looking yeah so, so make it really hard to see i would note that too would be if you can real difficult who's that there's like a whole field of them like this whole picture you can really see it all what am I noting? Uh, no. uh, just like zoom. how many small white organisms, small translucent organisms we're seeing. Another big oh, tripod, tripod, tripod fish. 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 Now so what? they orient themselves, prop themselves up and orient themselves in the prevailing current direction. So, so I guess that answers our question of which direction the current is coming from. <laughs> and you can kind of see that as it stuff floats by it. They're like the pointer dogs of the deep sea. <laughs> No, what or oh, never mind. I see. I like how he's just completely unfazed. Yeah. <laughs> this giant machine looking at I him. I love the. I don't know what the word is, but for the big uh, protrusions coming out of. Yeah. His head. They look like whiskers. Oh, oh, oh no, there it goes. Behind. Oh, oh they're actually they're quick. fin rays. So those are their what are they? pectoral. They're fin rays. They're their okay. pectoral oh, fins are really modified. And then the cool, the, the ones underneath are their anal fins, not their pectoral. So <laughs> yeah, they Super. literally just swam over there. Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna lay here. Set himself up again. Uh, Set it. Not their up. pectorals. Their pectorals are the big, uh, the big fan. Interesting. Yeah, the sensors. And and. The purpose is to help sense current direction, or to ah, uh, they're ambush predators. They they feel the vibration of their food. They have super reduced eyes, which I think is part uh -huh. of why they are unbothered by the ROVs going by. Um, but they detect vibration and microcurrent um, with those pectorals hmm. to find oh, prey. Oh wow! Makes sense. That was once a big sponge. No longer. <laughs> So I'm guessing we're going to get yanked the other way mm -hmm. soon. I'm kind of curious, knowing now that the current is coming from that Go direction, what uh, what it looks like on the other side of this feature. Yeah. Oh, a coral. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hey. Anyone Can we right look there? at the coral quickly, please? Sure. Oh, that looks like a like white, white paracord. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. First. Yeah. Well, one of the first branching corals we've seen so far. All right, we're good. Thank okay, you. Thanks. Okay, full wide. Oh, and then I know. I'm not sure if this is completely appropriate for right now, but I did want to say happy Pride Month. Oh yeah. It's June 1st. Yeah. June 1st. To all of our LGBTQ plus ally and allies out there.
Absolutely. So sad I'm missing the Pride Parade in I Philly. Know. But I will personally be supporting, I will try to be supporting other um, events and things going on as I can, even though I'm away for like the whole month of June. <laughs> And I encourage all of you too, personally. Are you gone after this too? I'm gone until like the 26th. Oh man, okay. I know. So, I got like four days. And OET is committed to including, amplifying, and making space for the LGBTQIA plus community, as well as the Black, Indigenous, Lat Latino, Asian, Pacific Islander, and Native Hawaiian communities. Yes, yeah, go ahead. So we always encourage a diverse pool of applicants, particularly learners from populations who have not traditionally been represented in STEAM. Which is unfortunately many of those groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But excited to see that change. Stay tuned, more, more Pride Celebration content coming for Nautilus Live this month. And we just wrapped up Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So lots right, of great video, content there celebrating uh, those switch. contributions community's contributions to science and to this space. You'll hear it go pretty quiet Come here as meters. teams get ready for a watch change, um, transitioning from 12 to 4s to our 4 to 8s. And your next SBL host will be Katie, and you all have fun with her on the next watch from 4 to 8. And we just got um, a input from a scientist ashore saying that the branched coral that we found might have been a hydrocoral or a stylasterid, but it's tough to see. But yeah, um, we're at our shift change, so we'll be signing off. But yeah. Can you reseed that, the DVL? Gulf of Mexico benthic biologist who would taste different mussels to see how close they were to the hydrogen sulfide vents as a way when you just t drop a dredge and you bring up a whole bunch they could sort them by taking little pieces of tissue and tasting it and seeing oh, how no. bad it tastes and the worse it tastes the closer it was to the vent site. Oh, no. 
Oh no, that's interesting. That's not real, is that I is really interesting. Afraid I actually believe the story. I'm oh, like, yeah, no. I, I can. I'm surprised, but I can see it happening. Oh God. No this judgment. No judgment. Out. Just no. that's interesting. That's because a, there's so many bad things. Like you're eating like <laughs> so much lead. <laughs> lead, mercury. Yeah, lots of. Lots Toxic. Of things that I wouldn't make oh. a habit of doing that. Okay. Not for hydrothermal silence, but that is an important part of any indigenous science practices is uh, kind of examining with all senses, including tasting. Megan, I don't know if it's just my headset. Yeah, I cannot super hear. Quiet. I cannot hear Megan. That's super off funny this. because they Bacom had you turn up on? so loud last time. <laughs> so I don't know if they turned the studio down. What calm are you on, Megan? Studio. I'm in studio one. Studio one. Mm-hmm. So are these pillow results? Yes. Okay. Look at, is so, what do you make, is just that this, do you think they continue underneath all this sediment or is this little high like a particularly a side vent or something? I think it's a high. Okay. I mean, I, mean, I there's definitely more underneath the, the sediment. Sure, but. Um, but for this particular flow, I think that's Quick just what, there, what this is. Then I can't see what it is. Yeah. That's good, thanks. Did you make that one out, Brian? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, zoom a little more for him. Look Ooh, a little wow. sea star. Still can't work it out. There's so many little critters in there. I think it's there. actually a little primnoid. Look at those downward facing little scaly um, ten, um, polyps. I think that's some type of prim primnoid that has been either damaged or is young. Uh, you got full zoom there? All right. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's some type of primnoid. Okay, and that's an unusual away. growth form. Thanks. Good, good eye. I missed that one. Daryl, somebody is saying that they love your The Longest John's song contribution, and they think that you should also add the dreadnoughts to it. They are also really good. Those are <laughs> two. My favorite is definitely The Longest John's, but I'll listen to some dreadnoughts. They're pretty good. And I think The Longest John has done a co collab with him before. i got to check that out. Thank you for the suggestion. We also have Crosby, Steels, Nash & Young. And Bob Schneider with Great Big, Great Big Sea. Oh, one of my favorite songs. I actually have that on my playlist right now. Is that dead? Or just a headless stock? I honestly don't know. I don't see any signs of polyps on it. Maybe. Maybe not. Push in a bit more, folks. Right. Oh. Oh, it's a stickopathies. I think. Maybe. Did you say stickopathies? I did say that, but okay. now I'm second guessing myself. Uh, that one's going to probably remain a mystery until we send uh. that around to a couple people. Okay, go away. It's got. There's a slight chance it's a sponge. It, the skeleton doesn't look quite right for a black coral, but the tentacles look right for a black coral. Mm. These little. These little whips around here are quite enigmatic. But that was definitely different than the last one we looked at. Yeah, I need to uh, leave these rocks and move on. You're going to have to come up. <laughs> Still swinging in. I like the name of that one, Stickapathy. It did look like a stick. <laughs> it come right up. There's no uh, rocks for a while. It come under you. Interesting is the lack of sea pens here too. Not only are we seeing a light on the coral side, we're not seeing the sea pens out here in the sediment either. And we're not seeing, we've seen three sea cucumbers 
um, and only one of them was uh, in contact with the sediment, which is again surprising. You know, I'm not seeing really any bioturbation or, or you know the life mixing up the sand here. A lot of times you see feeding traces or holes or um, oh. things. Oh, that's what a is that? What is that? Some type of jelly. Can you pull up Dougal's uh, wish list? Zoom in there. Oh, so cool. Oh, oh look at that thing. Beautiful. It looks like a firework. It's so cool. What? Oh, it's just, just hit the movement. Bar from that. What? What? <laughs> oh, okay. This is so cool. Oh. Brian, do you have any idea what this guy color. is besides a jelly? Uh, no. Ah, it's coming um, right I'm for look us. Oh. I'm looking. Um, oh, it almost booped us. And that dark Whoa. red color means it's practically invisible to everyone who doesn't bring big spy lights. Yeah, like I can us. push in this a little bit. So it's pretty cool. Out there in the light. I like its Go skirt. To I do, too. It? What do you it call looks it? like a fringe skirt. Yeah. <laughs> Tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's that's what it's called. They're called oh uh, yes, oh uh, yes, that. <laughs> Any chance of slurping this guy? <gasps> My uh, heart skipped a beat. Maybe. I don't have a good sense of how big it is either yet. You can see it in the down looking camera there. Turn how on the. Uh, yeah, that's going to be too big to slurp. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, probably. Yep, okay. It's chasing us. Yeah. I know. I want to know how many tentacles it has. It's like it's territorial or something. Oh. <laughs> or we're causing a massive back eddy in front of the vehicle. More likely <laughs> that. <laughs> that's probably true. So I've got a couple references back here to... Um, oh, it looks like an eyeball from this view. A hala trep... Yes being the genus, but they're all Riffle not wide. this red. Um, but we will we will send this to Dr. Dinsey Lugel, mm, you, you know, Dougal Lindsay um, at uh, Jams Tech in Tokyo and get his opinion of it when they shortly and get an ID later. Absolutely. Yeah, the halotrophies they've seen before are, are like either that purple or that totally clear white. That would be awesome if this was a different one. Backing up sand coming off the vehicle there. Wow. Oh, bad video. That was a really cool jellyfish. It looked like an eyeball when you looked at it from the top. We might end up having two highlight reels. This is awesome. Oh, two highlight reels from the same watch. Except for all the sand off the ROV. Okay, coming on you. Come, come up five. <laughs> that might be going on YouTube. Thank you, viewer. Yes. Oh, we have a really great question. Um, what does becoming a National Marine Sanctuary mean, and why is it important? I feel like Megan's still on. This might be. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, so we have a really great question. What does becoming a National Marine Sanctuary mean and why is it important? Sure. Um, yeah, this area is within our proposal right now. It has been nominated and is up for National okay, Marine Lynette, Sanctuary. Okay, we can start moving again, please. Proposal designation, and uh, that would mean a few different things. Um, number one, it's a really great chance for anyone to make their voice heard about what they think um, should be done with the management of our shared oceans of our national oceans. So that's, I think, one of the coolest parts is the chance for people to, whatever their thoughts are about this place, um, get those into the process. Uh, really direct, like, door being held open to, to get involved. Um, also, it just means that we would have the we'll opportunity bring our head to... Bring a little more to the right. We're going to light up the rocks there. Yeah, we'd have the chance to designate this as one of those special places in America's oceans. Um, becoming a National Marine Sanctuary in and of itself doesn't necessarily 
um, mean any particular set of regulations like this would be allowed or this wouldn't be allowed. That's what the public right. comment is for right now. But um, some of the things in the proposal that have been nominated as, as part of it would be involving greater education and outreach, creating more opportunities for people to get to know this area, um, creating a Shouldn't cultural and out. indigenous um, management structure so that we could recognize the importance of these places um, to Polynesian and Micronesian peoples that have used them for, for a long time. A lot of these islands have really That's rich Micronesian need. history. Okay. Super cool. I see you on blue. Or not on blue. Who is that? Yep, that's an Umbalula. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, uh, there's been a lot of history for since really like time immemorial of using this ocean realm. And a National Marine Sanctuary is one way that, to elevate and recognize that history. So, uh, yeah, really exciting chance, chance for everyone to get involved and say like what you think should be the priorities of how we how we care for and manage this part of the ocean. Um, so it's a long process. The public comment is open right now. You can check it out on the blog on Nautilus Live. Click the gallery tab. If you're watching over on YouTube, hop over to nautiluslive.org and uh, check out how to get involved and submit your comment. You just have to do it by tomorrow. So um, all, then all those comments will go in and a sanctuary management plan draft would be um, generated by NOAA and that would be shared publicly. They have to address all the comments that come in and then uh, there will be another chance for people to kind of review the proposed rules and regulations as well as the proposed boundaries um, of that draft plan. But, you know, I think these are we know that the waters around Kingman and Palmyra have some of the richest biodiversity. We're seeing these massive underwater mountains. This mountain is 12 miles long. And it's never been explored before. So and I think it's exciting to, to think about how we want to care for these places now that we know they're here and since they're within U.S. waters, you know, and within U.S. stewardship. That was awesome. Thank you, Megan. Sure thing. So we have another question online is, how do you get a job like this where you're able to explore the deep sea? Is there any special processes or degrees that you need to possess to work on a vessel like Nautilus? Right. I think everyone has a different story. So you can actually go on nautiluslive.org. You could, if you're on there right now, you uh, can just click on one of the people who's on watch. And through that, you can see uh, we ha all have bios for how we got to our positions. Um, so that would probably be the first place to start. Yeah, and I think that brings up an excellent point is that there's no one set way to come on board. We need everybody um, from video engineers, data engineers, chefs, cooks, uh, navigators, pilots, science, ge or biology, geology. Okay, push it. Anemone. Yeah. I don't you think want to uh, stop her up there. Yeah, that looks. That, yeah. That's the one I'm not familiar with. I'm yeah, I was gonna say I don't I see think we've seen often. this one before yet. Um, what are the little barbels at the end of it? The little white tips. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know what they do. So a lot of times you see those on coralomorphs, which aren't technically anemones. They've been separated out. Um, so this might actually be a Corallomorpharian as opposed to a true anemone. Um, but the coloration and the shape of this one's a little bit different than I'm used to seeing in the Corallomorphs. So I'm not 100% sure. Good and thought. I don't know what the, the function is of the little tips. Push in a bit more, Terrell. We've got a tight shot while we're here. So anemones are also cnidarians, just like the corals we're seeing, but they're motile. They can actually move around. They look they look like they don't, but they actually can. Um, they've got a big muscular foot, and they can walk across the uh, sea floor and, and relocate as they see fit. They're kind of slow, but um, it is funny if you have a saltwater aquarium uh, that you can look at and that you think they're, you know,
Cool, so just continuing the watch change here. Do you send your questions in? We'll get to them as soon as we can. Good afternoon, evening, everyone. Uh, we're just doing a quick watch change here as the 4 to 8 comes on. Uh, we'll get back to exploring momentarily. Test one, two. I hear you. Back row's got you. You no longer have control. I now have control. Okay, Hal. <laughs> well, what are we paying you for then? <laughs> Roger. Nav Science, can you tell me when you're in high pack next just how far away from our drop point we have made? All right, so welcome everybody. It is the four to eight ship, the ship that sees all the amazing critters. Um, my name is Katie. I am uh, the lead science communicator, getting to talk to y'all guys for the next four hours. In just a moment, can we do our normal, everybody go around the room, say their name, say their, what they're doing on board. And in honor of all the school years getting out, say your favorite teacher. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, say your favorite teacher that you've had. Mainly just because it's a, uh, I've been receiving a lot of texts from all kinds of teachers right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Katie Doyle, Science Communication Fellow. My favorite teacher was Miss Wyand and Miss French, who was our school librarian and my favorite science teacher of all time back when I was in fifth grade, because she let me take care of the turtles. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Coralie Rodriguez. I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. I feel like if I don't say Adam, he's going to get mad. <laughs> but I'm not going to say Adam. 
Uh, probably my advisor. She's actually a really good teacher, and I took a class with her, and it was really good. And also, she's my advisor, and she's a really <laughs> good mentor. I feel like if I didn't say her, that would also, like, get in trouble. But apart from those two people, um, I had a science teacher in middle school named Sister Karen, who was really cool, and then also Dr. Jeremy Boyce, who was a geology teacher in undergrad. Shout um. out to all of you, you guys. Is that a nun? Like, you said Sister Karen? Oh my god, not Sister Karen. I'm so sorry. Sister Karen was my chemistry teacher, and we had problems, but sorry, Karen in... Yes, she was a nun, but... So cool! Karen from uh, middle school. Why not? I used to live le next to a nunnery, a convent. I love the nuns. They were awesome. They're interesting, for sure. I've got so many stories about nuns. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after introductions, we got to share our nun stories. <laughs> All right, Brian. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Brian Kennedy. I'm a deep sea benthic ecologist, uh, and I am the watch lead for four to eight and the biological sciences lead for the expedition. Um, favorite teacher? I guess I'm going to have to go with three. Um, one was Vicki Suter, my um, high school ocean si national ocean sciences bowl coach. Um, and then I had two in college that deserve special recognition. Uh, Dr. Leslie Souter, who we all just called Doc. Uh, and Gorka Sancho, our ichthyology um, professor. Oh, I love it. Chris, what about you? Uh, well, hello, everybody. I'm Chris Ryan. I'm the data logger here on the Nautilus. Um, I've had a lot of very good teachers. It's hard to pick a favorite one. But when I was a kid, I got Mrs. Walker was my 7th and 8th grade science and math teacher. She was amazing. So I'm going to go with that. So awesome. Lynette, what about you? Hey everybody, I'm Lynette. Sure I'm the it. navigator on this watch. Uh, favorite teacher? Yeah. Um, probably my second grade teacher, Mrs. Leach. Oh, I love that. Because everybody's saying like high school, college teachers. Yeah. And I'm like, yay, elementary teacher love. Yeah, no, she was awesome. We got a second grade class in the chat. Okay. So, <laughs> what's up second grade? Oh, Dan, what about you? Uh, Dan's sitting in the heart chair tonight. My favorite teacher, um, I'm married to her. Aww. Uh, I didn't realize you were married to a teacher. <laughs> and my wife has uh, successfully homeschooled both of our teenagers. The oldest one um, just graduated and is starting uh, college in the fall, 17 years old. Top nice. of his class in science and math in the state. Wow. So That's a really sweet That's one. So I awesome. hope, uh, which, so like if your wife had a teacher name, what's her teacher name? Like uh, Her name is Deanna. Her teacher name or her yeah. real name? Like is it Miss, I don't know your last name. No, it's just Deanna. Okay. Her mom. Mom, you're making me do math again. <laughs> <laughs> It was really cool uh, homeschooling our boys. We had to kind of go through, you know, all the uh, stuff w stuff we forgot from uh, grade school and high school again as well. Oh. We have a really fantastic uh, local community of homeschoolers. That uh, a lot of parents from uh, Oregon State University and um, yeah, just a very diversified. Uh, group of uh, parents and kids that have been really fantastic. That makes me happy. My other favorite teacher was my second grade uh, teacher, Mrs. DeFrost, who taught us the metric system. <laughs> set you up for success. What's that? I said she set you up for success. Yeah, we were supposed to switch over. <laughs> no, we never did. I'm still <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Rin, what about you? I know tomorrow we're talking to uh, your former class. What? That's awesome. Yeah, that's right. Uh, hello, I'm Ren. I'm, uh, co I'm piloting Atlanta tonight. And yeah, my favorite teacher was probably Michelle Grau, who is the uh, who's a shop teacher and a robotics teacher and the um, mentor for my old high school FRC robotics team. And I yeah. love that. So, and we're going to get to talk to them tomorrow? We will. I'm pretty sure she'll be there at the uh, ship-to-shore interaction. These, please. Yes. 
What's that? Can oh, we yeah. go look at these, please? Yeah, yeah. That's so exciting. So golf back. Yeah. Daryl, what about you? Go ahead, Daryl. Hello, um, Daryl, I'm your video intern, currently operating the camera right now, while Dan is maneuvering awesomely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, um, my favorite teacher is uh, Miss Ankney. She was from middle school. She followed me all the way from middle school to high school. And so I had her as a teacher twice and then had her as a vice principal at this other school. So Dr. Ankney, she's awesome. I think that's awesome. You're the first one to say a middle school teacher. I said she a went, middle school teacher. Oh, did you? I thought you were high school. No, she went from school. middle school to being a vice principal. So she, she worked on her degree. Nice. All right, that's good enough. I've never. What this is these? interesting. <laughs> these look like four distinct sponges that have all colonized this same dead um, stalk of some other organism. And I don't recall ever seeing something like this before. I, when I first saw it from a distance, I thought it was going to be some type of um, carnivorous sponge. They sometimes have little balls on them and gr grow in groups. Um, but this looks like four kind of normal sponges that just happen to all be the same age and the same thing. This is some kind of re strange recruitment event, um, it looks like. But that's cool. But I think we've got all we need back here. Thanks. Right yeah, here. I that's wish so people could have seen bud, Brian's face when, when he was looking at it. He was so <laughs> confused. Brian, do you think they could have budded off, or do you think it's a recruitment event? Or are they all the same age? Um, I don't know. I, I'm recruitment event is my best guess, but um, but any you know certainly anything budding off is possible. Um, but I don't think it's probable is probably the best way to just say it. I mean, that makes more sense in some ways from, from a standpoint of why there were four right there next to each mm -hmm. other. But the growth, way those things grow and the distance apart from them, it wouldn't make sense to me they were budding because yeah. they don't move their stalks. So if the stalks were all rooted in the same attachment point, I might buy that. But I, have, I don't know what the mechanism would be for the sponge to get 10 centimeters further down the stalk <laughs> before it started growing. Yeah. Well, you can uh, scoot us along. I'll keep Argus out to the uh, to the east of us there. So we have a very sweet comment online that says, my mom is probably the best teacher I've ever had. She taught me to be the kind of person I wanted to be. That's so sweet. And Mother's Day just passed a couple of weeks ago. Dead? Yeah, it was the day we all showed up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. That was a hard one because you wanted, like, normally for Mother's Day, I go home and I visit with my mom and, like, I've always bring her flowers. And this time I was like, nothing for you now, Nancy Doyle. My parents uh, went to Portugal right before I came here. So I told them I would Venmo them, buy them dinner oh, in Portugal really sweet. for Mother's and Father's Day because I couldn't be bothered to figure out a gift. So Hazel from second grade asks us, what are we looking for? Are we looking for more coral? Corley, I know you're, I know what you're looking for. Uh, yeah, so on the geology side, we're trying to figure out a little bit more about the mechanisms of formation of the line islands because it's a little bit confusing. So to do that, uh, one of the things that we are trying to do is date the mountains, which means we want to figure out when they were erupted because all of these are uh, volcanic. And so to do that, we're going to be looking for, we're, we've termed it angular cantaloupe shaped rocks. <laughs> so angular is like you kind of want a bunch of edges. You don't want them to look so rounded. We want a cantaloupe-sized rock um, so that it's big enough so we have a lot of um, sample to data and do other things with it. So that's on the... Can you uh, put the, uh, the DSC up? So, wait, wait, I so that's on the actually. geology side. Can I do it? I love it. Thank you. On the biology side, Brian, what are y'all looking for? Uh, everything. <coughs> 
to be honest. Uh, this is seamount has never <laughs> been dove before. Um, this uh, whole region is extremely underexplored. It's had a grand total of how many dives have we had? Um, what number dive is this? This is dive 10? Uh, no, 11. <laughs> this is dive 11. Okay, it's been a, well, well real dive 11. We have one full so 12 numbers. Yeah. Um, so there have been 12 dives uh, in this area, S period. Super easy. And so everything we see out here is a new record and a um, for this particular seamount uh, and building an idea of the community composition out here. And so uh, we're that? interested in all the biology, um, particularly looking at oh, I got uh, potential new species, new organisms. Um, we're sampling do um, one too, the, yeah. the dominant morphotype or the most, the most common coral so we can make sure we get the ID uh, really accurate because um, a lot of these things are hard to identify from uh, video alone. Um, so we're really exploring. Um, this is baseline character characterization at its finest. We're going to a place that's never been before and seeing what's there. Excellent answer. Thank you. I can't believe this is already our 11th dive. Yep. I feel oh. like I feel like we've barely seen anything. Oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa there. Yeah, Take a step back. Oh. I don't know. I feel like we've seen so much cool stuff. I don't know. I feel like we're just getting started, you know? Yes, I will agree oh. there. I feel I'm like we're just up. getting started. Like we just scratched 13. the surface. Oh, this is yeah. number 13. Thanks, right. Megan. You're welcome. So dive number 13. So Hazel, How do if you're I get still back listening, to my, um, what do you want us to see? Uh, How do I get back to my destination? <laughs> Pick the dis different destinations. Oh, now I've completely jacked it up. We have a very sweet comment. Not only How do I get uh, pick the destinations on the left side? Up. Uh, I'm trying to get the big one that had the layout on it. Which one are you trying to get? This one? Wait, this yeah. one? Let me see if I can... Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Wait. So, head to pip. How did I get back there again? Yeah. There you go. Uh, kind of get it. I'm not quite there yet. So we have a sweet comment online that but says, close. Nautilus Live has been my teacher since last year. I've learned so much and absolutely enjoy being able to join you on all your dives. This is Kay. really fun. Um, fly the ROV now. Quit pressing buttons. <laughs> And we have a request from Hazel in second grade. She wants us to find more fish and more shrimp. <laughs> Hazel, we will try our absolute best. We take a look at sponge at the bottom of the screen, please. Right there. Wow, this one looks really cool. It's giving an elephant ear. Or a mushroom. Or <laughs> I can't decide. I, the more I look at it, the more I... I figured you would it be happy like about all that sand things. right there. <laughs> look at that beautiful, beautiful sand. Just geology at work. <sighs> Contrary to popular belief, yeah. sand is actually not my Different. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you have an auto function engaged and you... Uh, Get a tug, so the autos tried to fight back and blew it out there. Blaming it on the computer, not the pilot. Always the arrow, never the archer. <laughs> so hello to my fellow Texas. 
I love talking to another Texan. Uh, the okay. biggest fish They're that we've there. seen this deep, we saw a sperm whale in the Gulf of Mexico a couple of years ago. It's one of my favorite highlights of all time. Not a fish. It's not a fish, but it was the biggest creature. But it was from the Gulf of Mexico. So I figured my fellow Texan would be excited about that. So go look up the YouTube video. I love that. I love that clip. Did you get a look there? Yeah, right. I did. Sorry, I've got my head down on my notes trying to figure out what it is. You want to uh, no, sit think, there for a minute? Nope, or? nope. I, we got the good enough shot for me to come by. I was hoping to do it on the fly. And I think it's a Euplectelid uh, Atlanticella. So, Brian, any tips for how to read those Latin names out loud? Because nope. you say them so beautifully, <laughs> and I just stumble all over just, them. I just go quickly and don't really, no, don't. Don't hesitate if I realize I miss a syllable, because I do all the time. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's a it's pretending confidence, not actual confidence. Okay. Because I read them like a like a kindergartner reading a Dick job. and Jane book. You, I mean, I, I do it enough that it some of the some of the syllable sounds are coming a little more comfortable, but for the most part, I just try and uh, rush through it and mumble it a little bit <laughs> and uh, make it and sound like nobody, I know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> So we have another question for you, Brian, which is, what is a recruitment event? Uh, that's just when you, I mean, it, the, it's when a bunch of things settle at the same time. So if you're planting a garden and you cast a bunch of seeds into the same spot, that would be a recruitment event. Um, so it, it's purely just a wave of seeds or larvae coming at uh, one particular time. Love it. Bring our head to the left a bit for me. Trying to get us lined up, but uh, backwards. So question for Lynette. All right. What is the largest and the smallest fish that you have seen while on Nautilus? The largest and the smallest. While on Nautilus. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you specifically called out Lynette. Lynette, yeah, what's, go to your what's, fish what's archive. Going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could be for anybody. Um, gosh, I don't know. Um, maybe the little batfish. That was pretty small. That was a really cool one with the sassy side eye. Yeah. Yeah, he was that awesome. That was cool. Um, oh, biggest fish. Gosh, I don't know. Um, probably when we're coming, like when we're recovering the vehicles coming up near the surface and there's fish swimming around. Oh, all those white tips. Or like the, is it mahi? Mm -hmm. Oh yep. yeah, I like yeah. Brian's comment earlier. How come the mahis never jump on board? Yeah, we found uh, we had found that. Uh, let's look oh. here a bit. Oh, hello, hello there, little um, friend. What are you? <gasps> is that? <coughs> never mind. Good. Thanks. It's a. Sea oh, it's a sea pig. pig. Yep. Still cool. Still cool. Yes. Just not what I thought it was. I thought it was going to be another one of those little octopi. Yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing. Maybe I need to wear my glasses when I'm Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynette. Of course. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Hello, Vancouver Island. We will be heading that way in a couple of weeks for the Oceans Network or Ocean Networks Canada cruise. And thank you for always tuning in to us. Vancouver Island. I wonder who that is. Hello. Yeah, I'm like, is it part of our ONC cruise? One of uh, one of our scientists from up there. Uh, sorry, what's that? Huh? Nothing. Uh, just about the Vancouver Island. Oh. Do you want to keep it moving in that direction, Dan? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
bridge now. Same step, please. Five zero zero six zero. Thank you. So, um, I'm going to come to your right a little bit. So you're looking uphill. I care not about six eight rep. Your OCD is just going to have to let it go. <laughs> I know it's hard. So we have an English teacher who's on their way to Tokyo for the fall, and they're wondering. Can I zoom push in easy on this guy? Have we ever seen a coelacanth? I would love to see a coelacanth, but I have never, ever seen one. Look what is that? This is so cool. It's a cucumber. I am. Our sea cucumber? Yeah. Yep. This I think see. we've seen what this one it? before. Is it, yeah. is it this is from our first highlight reel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if it is the I mean, second one. of sea cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is the Count Chocula of sea meters. cucumbers. <laughs> Headless chicken! Yeah, this is the one that's <laughs> called the Headless Chicken Monster. Someone had to say it. Has a common name. Gotta love it. Kind of needs to do another quarter spin to really give us the best Headless Chicken Monster profile look. Can we make a Halloween deep sea creature highlight reels? Like this oh, guy. Oh, it has been done. Yeah. Oh, it has been. <laughs> okay. Never mind. That one, the uh, vampire squid. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. So I mean, you can really oh. see there that modified frill, as we call it, is a fin attachment that's used to bring them up in the water column, believed to avoid predators and to find new new spots on the seafloor with lots of food. Uh, sea cucumbers are super cool that they eat with these paddle-like appendages in front of their face that are kind of like sticky paddles that they put down in the sediment and then bring up into their mouth like you were licking off food off your palm, just like palming your food and stick it in your mouth. You can see a couple of those tentacles there in the mouth. Looks like this one's also got some kind of uh, mm -hmm. associate that's just spinning out of out of view now, but it might have had a parasitic copepod or something similar uh, on its back. So cool. Look at it. All its feeding tentacles tucked in, except those little two so coming around to its mouth. Hello, friend. Great flying, Dan. Aw, all curled up. Like it's ready to take a nap. Well, yeah. Or maybe it's just being shy. Oh. Oh. Aerodynamic. Oh. Hydrodynamic. It's coming right for us. <laughs> Whoa, that's a cool view. Oh yeah, you can see those sticky petals there. Um, those little two feet. Mm -hmm. So cool. Whoa. You are such a beautiful oh, creature. There's a cuskill in out of land to view. Oh, it really is coming right for us. Wow. Does anybody else just want to kind of go squish it like a little bit just to be like bloop bloop? No, it's just me. I feel like it's if we did that, What's all that? of its sand would fly out. <laughs> Is I that know. little light bit, the copepod you're talking about, friend? Yep. Wow. Oh. Does it have like a little parasite on its back? Yep. Oh. I'm, so. I'm guessing copepod just because they're one of the most common kind of white parasites out here, but I couldn't be sure. Our copepods mean. Mean to the sea pig. I'm, yes. They're the bullies of the deep sea community. What is it? Simplest one, yeah. Not a sea pig. What is this one called? Headless in chicken. Nasty. Yeah. In a nasty thing. Ooh, Cuscale. Oh, that makes me so sad. Uh, uh, I love it. We have somebody online who said, your watch just gets all the highlights for the expedition. And you are correct. Good person online. But we have two highlights that aren't from us. One is the jellyfish. Uh, and then there was one of all the coral beauties.
We have to give some of them to other watches. Yeah, it was yeah. like all Gotta the watches are seeing good things. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like ours is the best though, just because I'm biased. Ooh, an excellent question from online. Uh, what is on your deep sea exploration playlist? I have to think about that one. It's definitely not Baby Shark. Anybody else? Is What is on your deep sea exploration playlist? Metallica, Disturbed, <laughs> Tool. Going with all the hard rock. That's a Blue Water playlist. Oh, Blue Water, yeah. Gotta listen to some NF and some Imagine Dragons. Got some good variety. Well, Nat, I feel like we were just having this conversation last night about your playlist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Were we? Yes. I have vivid memories of it. Hmm. Something about like Afro-Cuban drum beats or something. Oh no, that's Amber's playlist. No. That's my twin sister. No, 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 no. I remember you were talking about jamming out. That Let me take a little bit of a closer zoom That was the Amber. <laughs> Go ahead. 100% Amber. You were sitting on a chair right next to me. <laughs> but I guess Amber was too at one point. But no, it was you. I, th I think it was Amber. <gasps> There's a team of tall blonde she was, she was humans on this expedition. <laughs> I think I see a note in there, but the polyps are a little oh. bit smaller and daintier than I'm used Some to endo? for bamboos. How far down do you think you see the node, Brian? I don't. I'm, I don't actually. Mm. I'm looking at this one kind of up here near the top, that dark spot. I was wondering, yeah, and there's another slightly darker spot. Um, let's tentatively call it a bamboo for now and get a second opinion later. All right, thanks, Dan. Right, Dick. So you can see in contrast here in the sediment on how few um, waves, ripples there are um, compared to some of the other dives here and indicating the less current. There's something red yes, on the please. right. Yeah, looks like another sea cucumber on the right and then something gelatinous and clear right here that I'd be curious to look at real quick. Uh, Pretty sure I know it. what it is. Push in there, Daryl. Just confirm it. You can push in there. Is it a predatory tunicate? I believe so, yes. This looks like the oh, same the yeah. same variety we collected the other day. Yeah, it's got those orangey red spots in yep. there. All right, that's great. Thanks. Okay, thank so you. So yeah, so this is a predatory tunicate. Um, with the exception of the fish, this is your closest relative you'll see down here, most okay. likely. Really? Yeah, it's a, um, it's a chordate. I didn't know that. Corley, do you think the sand is going to be like really fine, like dust or like regular beach sand? Question online. Um. Look up. I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet, but I mean, it will have like some sand grains that you would see on the beach, but I think it's also going to have like that marine snow we've been seeing. And also, I mean, you can kind of see like when the sea cucumbers have been expelling mm -hmm. some stuff, it looks kind of sand grainy ish. But I think there's other things in there too that will uh, change the overall texture. Awesome, thank you.
I think we just made Hazel, the second grader, happy. She said that she saw a fish. I'm assuming that's the uh, cusk eel or the cutthroat eel. I can't remember which one it was. I think we, I haven't seen, I don't remember seeing a, a cutthroat, so I think we've only seen cusks. It was just the cusk over yeah. in the Atalanta view. And we were all focusing in on the really cool uh, sea cucumber. So I spent a lot of time last night staring at the rock samples from yesterday's dive. <laughs> and they look like lagoon sand that's been partially lithified to me. The, the sediment? Yep. The, well, the semi, you know, very soft rock. Mm -hmm. um, so my guess is, is we were actually going through a paleo shoreline of the channel between islands that formed the atoll. Interesting. And that's what we were moving through. That's so cool. Um, last night. Did you do an acid test? I did not. It. What would the yeah, acid test tell us, Brian? That's, that's what I said my favorite teacher was. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So Chris, your favorite teacher is listening online. And she says, I'm so in awe of you and your team. The work, the important work you were doing is incredible. I'm so proud of you. Uh, it was so sweet what you said about me being one of your favorite teachers. You are a fine example of homo sapiens. It is a pleasure and an honor to know you. Keep up the good work. Love, Miss Walker. Aww. Uh, thanks, Miss Walker. <laughs> it's great to hear from you. So Brian, going back to what you were saying about cool. the sediment layer, um, is what you were talking about the lithified sand a good example of what we would have seen at the center of a of an atoll? That's my hypothesis. Yeah, like if you go diving in the center of a, an atoll, you get this very rounded um, sand a lot of the times, and uh, and this was very soft rock, if it's even Push you can even call it a rock. Um, and when you look at it under the microscope, it looks yeah, it looks like lagoon sand to me. Um, yeah, there was probably some forams in there and some other things uh, as as well, but it looked like it was probably what you would find in the center of a shallow lagoon. Okay. All right, I think this is Parasocrinus. Um, thank you. Thank you. So going back to our deep sea exploration playlist, we have some people who say that 80s would be their favorite thing to listen to. We have another listener who says, or a couple of listeners who say Depeche Mode uh, and Def Leppard. One person says The Police, oh. Tom Petty, Bob Dylan, Pink Floyd, Pearl Jam, Deftones. I love it. I love all the different um, deep sea exploration playlists. I'm going to uh, come up on the other gonna get shallow for you it looks like so Brian you mentioned an acid test what would be what would that tell us and you know what it, would that be is kind of like a next step figuring out if that hypothesis I think we're going is true. back to uphill yeah so, so um, then we the question about uh, doing an acid test on the rocks is if you carbonate um, dissolves quite readily in acidic conditions so if you drop a little you know hydrochloric acid or something it doesn't it doesn't take a very strong acid at all uh, you'll get it to bubble and it's actually the Wait, uh, carbon there, dioxide there? coming off the calcium carbonate as it dissolves under the acid so it's a really definitive way to tell if you've got some kind of carbonate based um, sediment or rock if it bubbles when you drop a, a mild acid on it or a strong acid either way okay thank you there's a really funny joke in mineralogy where there's if you're trying to figure out a mineral and hand sample, I'd calcite, the sponge if you calcite and halite, Here. which is Go halite ahead, yeah. is yeah. table yeah. salt essentially, uh -huh. it's NaCl. The one on so top right. So to figure out if uh -huh. it's calcite, you put acid on it, but to figure if it's halite, so out if it's halite, you would like taste it. And then there's a joke like, hopefully you don't accidentally taste the calcite because it has acid on it. <laughs> <laughs> or you always taste it first. <laughs> Bad laboratory safety practices. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. We've never, 
I've never done that. Are you kidding me? I've tasted halite repeatedly, trying to figure out. Okay, what it well, was. halite, yes, but not anything <laughs> that has acid on it. As a general rule, don't don't eat stuff in a laboratory setting. <laughs> yeah. Depends on how much you eat. <laughs> <laughs> So hello, Hopeville, Hopeview Middle School. Uh, Thanks for there, tuning, see if we can tuning see anything. in. I dusted it. That's why ROVs do not back up. All right, that's good. Thanks. Roger. Sorry about that one. No worries. I got enough for an ID. Uh, let me, we're coming uphill again, so let me uh, get up on the other side, yeah. That's going to keep going for a while. What do we got, a 150 meter layback, 200 meters, something like that? 100 meter layback. It's Crazy. really interesting to me that we've got so little current here, and yet the vehicle's got a, a such a big layback, meaning the current's ripping somewhere. So on our last 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. dive, there was a very strong current, and we were able to see so many different types of corals. So do you think one of the reasons that we could possibly not be seeing as many corals is because the current is not as strong down here? Yep. That would be my primary hypothesis. There's nothing bringing them nutrients or anything. Oh, there's no food for them. There's no food. No. I'm loving all the positive comments we're getting out in from all these viewers. I got another suggestion for the playlist. Ooh, what's that? The Longest Johns. That's a, it's a uh, sea shanty band from <laughs> Britain that does a really good job of soundtrack. I think this would also add a good soundtrack. So a good mix of music. What about Starboard Larboard, the Nautilus Live Band? Oh no. <laughs> Limited edition releases. It, they're Hard disbanded. to get a hold of their original vinyl. <laughs> get <a re> <laughs> They've currently been disbanded. That's funny. They broke up. Oh, the sad day. <laughs> Let's just say hiatus. Creative differences. <laughs> yeah. Creative differences. <laughs> I'm still in hope that Chris will break out his harmonica one day. Or that Adam will break out the ukulele. Chris, how long have you played harmonica for? Um, let's see. About 10, 15, 15 to 20 years, something like that. That's awesome. Harmonica, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a pitch perfect joke? <laughs> It doesn't work as well as Aka. Aka. Aka, excuse me? Roger. Huh? Oh, we have a... <laughs> it's so weird. We have somebody who was an archaeologist online who's saying that sometimes they'll lick the Appreciate artifact to see if it's bone or stone. If it's bone, it sticks. If it's stone, it doesn't. Not a common practice, and it tastes horrible. I can definitely imagine that. That's, it. That's good enough, Dan. Thanks. Roger. Okay. I've right. heard rumor of old school stuck in place, and then a day or two later, you're like, where'd the enemy go? All right. I think we're good back here. Thank okay. you. There's still that cartwheel, right? In addition to kind of shuffling, it'll actually roll. It wouldn't surprise me, but I don't actually know. That is true. Yes. Talking about cartwheeling, it makes me think of that s deep sea snail that cartwheels away from predators. Oh, yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but when you see those, they're pretty hilarious when they start cartwheeling off. Yep. So we're getting some input from shore on that um, whip um, that I was confused by earlier, and the vote is for carnivorous sponge uh, coming from shore. Thanks, team ashore. 
And there was some corals here, and I've lost the plot. Coralie, do you have an interest in a rock? Uh, which which one? I just should we be looking for one? Um, I feel like any of these rocks are going to be hard to pick up, but. Push in there just a bit for us, Daryl. Any of them are as angular as I want them to be. So we've got a glass sponge, excuse me, a glass sponge down here on the right, and another one of these um, whips that I'm still struggling with, whether they're bamboos or, or primnoids, or we're seeing, maybe seeing both. Um, You want her closer? Yeah, tighter. never mind. Sure. Hold on there, let me... Go. Oh, you're fine there, yeah. Anywhere in there, it's fine. Sorry. I'm trying to get the two cameras on it. Okay, you can go tight there. So DSC a little too close. <laughs> can you zoom in on that, Corley? Yep. Connor, do you have a, a thought on this one? I remain undecided. Full zoom, is it? That's full zoom. Not quite focus. So that's better text. I don't know if mine is gonna help. Yeah, I see no I see no nodes visible. Um, and you can kinda see the, the 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 little white flecks in the tissue down near the base that makes me feel more like a primnoid. Um, but these are kinda fat fleshy fleshy skeletons. Um, which I generally associate more with bamboos. Um, so this one will have to go out for phone a friend on shore later. But that should be great image, good enough imagery when I get a couple people to consult on it. So thank you. Roger. Okay, you can go wide. Thanks. And then our viewers online um, are wondering, they're curious. So when we say we're looking something up, what does that mean? Is there a universal database where the public can access? Yeah, so the, the guide I use most often uh, is, is totally publicly available. Um, so it's the uh, Okeanos Explorer Deep uh, Benthic Deep Sea Animal Guide or some combination of those words. Um, and Google will certainly get where you are. And it's a compilation of all the work that NOAA has done uh, and last, uh, well, I was in the Capstone Project, which was 2015 through 2017, a team at the University of Hawaii went through and um, annotated all the video and in great care w with like the help of like a hundred different taxonomists around the world, video change. identified as many things as they could. And so Appreciate that's my primary reference. That um, While we're here. A derivative of that guide has been continued by another group of researchers at the University of Hawaii, uh, no, focusing primarily on the Papanamakuakea uh, sanctuary and monument um, that is integrated work from the research vessel Falcor and the Nautilus um, and keeps that up to date for the Hawaiian Islands and we do see a lot of the same species so that's another great um, guide reference uh, and then I've got a few other cheat sheets that yeah. people of individuals have sent me um, for their areas of expertise um, that I've got referencing back here but for the most part, when the dives are over and we start annotating them after the cruise, we just start sending screenshots um, to all the experts. So uh, you know, we all kind of know the taxa that certain people are particularly interested in. And when we need help, uh, we, we, call it, we phone a friend. Awesome. Thank you so much. Copy it, TJ. What's up?
Negative. Why is the radio button here not working? It was working for Mike earlier. He was on the mic. He was on the physical. figure out the Z bias all over again because we're ballasted different on this type. Delta there, sir. You're fine on the Delta there. The current's taking it out behind us, and we're static at the moment, so I'm just coming up the hill beside you. Chip's not moving. Yeah, Roger. Got a second? Shoot. So you taught me yesterday, and I'm, you know, I only did it twice, so I already forgot. How do I get on the left the source or the destination so I can get, you know, like right okay. now? It, you got the soft panel on right now? Yeah. So, so, so I and have, then you're um, in the layout, which is uh, the kind of a button that's in the middle there. Uh, so then you're going to make sure you're on multi viewer one or most of your two, whichever one your, your side is two, and then Sarah's side is one. So slot one head one or slot one head two? Yeah, so choose whichever one of, th of those you so want. So if I choose slot one head two. Okay, and then what, what um, Nothing happens. spot? Oh yeah, so then you have to go to PIP. PIP. Yeah, and then what are you wanting to change? So now on PIP we have uh, uh, monitor three. No, we have monitor. Uh, yeah, we have monitor three. So if we want to get monitor four up in that picture. Uh, so one. So that's yours. That should be slot um, two, head two. Slot one, head two. Yeah. Oh, slot two, head two. Uh oh, sorry. It's the one that's... Slot two, head one. That's it. Ah. So go back to layout. This one. Try that one. And then pip. Yeah. You got it now? Okay, good. <laughs> Maybe between Lynette and I, we'll <laughs> remember tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, currently, for some bizarro reason, my soft panel's Can you, not uh, working. There, I'll do it <laughs> so. you're busy over there. Nav. Okay, when... Um, when we're coming up to this next kind of local peak, can we cheat up the uh, left side of the um, the feature? We'll get to the peak, but kind of if we can kind of veer up and come up the left side, since we kind of slid off the right of the last one, I'm curious if there's a difference in the life on, between the left and right um, flanks of this feature. I mean, just a couple degrees. What's what's it? 
Yeah, Looks I've like alerted the bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just called the bridge and told them. The bridge is, the bridge is hip. Yeah. Oh, the chiller needs love. It's a bit temperamental. That's uh, probably why TJ was after Emerson. I think so, yeah. Thanks, chat, for the link. Um, for our folks at home, if you're interested in the identification guide, it's the Benthic Deepwater Animal Identification Guide, oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. So our viewers are um, curious about the samples. Has the tunicate sampled a couple of days ago been identified? No. Um, I, uh, it's probably, oh, what's the name? Coleus, I think, is the, the, okay. the group, but we haven't gotten any further than that. Um, yeah. yeah, usually our samples are taken back to um, people who request them or right. the Harvard, I forget the name. Museum of Comparative Zoology. Yes, Museum of Comparative Zoology and um, experts will do it there. A lot of the things we sometimes can't get a species on because you can't really base um, classification off of just morphology, unfortunately. What's that? Yeah, so a right. lot of the, the detailed digging through those kind of records we save till after the cruise. Um, right. Only if something's particularly strange and piques our interest do we really do a d deep dive while we're on the boat. Uh, and the cataloging of every sample um, won't happen until we send it to the museum. Can you uh, bring your head okay. to the left Thank a bit you. for us? rocks out there somewhere. Uh, a little more to the left. Trying to light up those. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. There are rocks out there somewhere. Your sonar sea is farther than mine, so use yours to find rocks. You're fine. Your altitude is uh, 25 meters. <coughs> well, depends on if it's like that or like that. <laughs> but you're, uh, yeah, you're, you can come up five if it makes you happy. I know, we're moving. <laughs> Amber, can you zoom out on uh, Atlanta? It freaks us out when it nosedives and it zoomed in. It looks like it's hitting the dirt. Those big rollers come through and it, it's, if you watch the pitch there, it's pitching down really hard. So it looks like it's closer than it is, especially when she's zoomed in here. The frequency of those, the frequency of those rollers coming through are not Nautilus friendly. Adjust the right frequency to give us a pretty good pitch. Sixty meters to rocks so far. Yay! So when you are not, oh, that got really loud. When you are not on watch, what do you do? I like to sleep. Sleeping is my top priority when I'm not on watch. Yeah, sometimes uh, when sample, so when we recover, it's kind of just whoever's there to do the sampling. So sometimes I'll be doing that, but yeah, mostly uh, sleeping, 
eating. Yeah. <laughs> I've been enjoying, like, when I'm not, you know, working <laughs> or sleeping or eating, my, like, moment of peace has been reading my book. So I've been working Ooh. on the Wheel of Time series, and I've, like, Ooh, gone through, one. like, two books already. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite genre of books to read? I'm a big sci-fi fan. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Is there a fish, or is that a piece of debris? Oh, debris. Okay. Um, I will say, for me, I spend a lot of time up on the bridge, on top of the bridge, um, the flying bridge, or Monkey Island, as it gets called here. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a lot of times I'll sit up there with an audio book and headphones and listen to a book while watching the clouds or whatever is kind of my zen. Um, oh, I think there's but something small here. also a lot of, oh, I, didn't know um, I spend a lot of time when the ROV's not in the water, keeping up with email and keeping projects going. We had a grant proposal due last week and uh, some sure things like that so there's, there's a right? fair amount of different things what do you see sir um, i see something uh, right somebody here. circled something yeah there. sorry oh. roger i get it now. um there's a lot of just kind of paperwork um to keep things Ooh, from piling slippery. up on shore while we're out here it's one of the zoom in on the uh curses and Possible um, bioturbation. Yeah. yeah, one of the curses of the telepresence is that it's harder yeah. to be like, I was at sea. <laughs> Looks like, yeah, maybe something's under there. I don't know, but yep, okay, just kidding, we're good. I think there is something in the back. That full though. zoom, is it? Yeah, a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, you can zoom right in. That's, yeah. that's full zoom there. Maybe something. I think there's there. a critter in there. Yeah. I'm hopeful for you. Like a little little <laughs> hole. A little yeah. Something, well, while we're parked and if everyone's happy with position, do we want to try a push core here? <laughs> sure. <laughs> See if it stays. Yeah. That'd it's be worth really a try. Cool, yeah. Sure. So while we're getting ready for the push core, uh, is there any tunicate updates? Uh, no. I think we we talked about that yeah, while you were. Sorry. Oh, never mind. Oh, boo. Different. But the short answer is no. Oh, because we had two tunicates back to back. Have any of the uh, push cores been? Uh, no. Nope. All open. Roger. Yeah, we haven't quite been able to get any in fauna. Hmm. Sediment's been a little too loose for that, but that would be really cool if we did get something. Have you gone through any of the sediment samples in the dissecting scope to see what's... Actually, no. No, neither have I. No. Loopy has... No, not Loopy. This is not my watch. <laughs> Chris, have you done any of the sediment samples? Um, just preserved them. I haven't yeah, gone through to look at them. Okay, we've been just mind. ethanoling them and, cool. and not going through them because we require, I'm, I'm frankly a little hesitant to disturb them because right, I don't want right. to mess up the, the layering. Yep. Yeah. I'm curious to see what would be in there though. But there's some cool stuff. No. I'm also not sure our dissecting scope has the power to really see what's in there well. That thing's only a 3x scope. Right. And we probably need a compound scope to really see what's in between the sand grains. Some of the stuff will definitely show up in the dissecting scope, but not all of it. Right. Amber, have you read the Wheel of Time sci-fi sci books or fantasy books? Yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Oh. Yeah, the Robert Jordan ones. Okay, are they any good? I think so. <laughs> I tried. To, so I heard that they are really good, and I tried to watch the Amazon. Um, the, the first series. Okay, hear me out. Because <laughs> I could not. I made it five minutes in, and I was like, this is not for me. All right. Much like uh, Game of yeah, Thrones. Push it, mm -hmm. in there for us. it takes a while to establish the world. Um, so, you know, it took a full season for Game of Thrones to really happen for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. happy to go here. I'm, and I'm, yeah, we don't so we'll care. see all about season two, okay. which is coming in September. <laughs> so have you already finished one of the books and have it on, on board? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, can I I've, read it? And then I have it, it on my Kindle. So oh, never can mind, I no. share books on Kindle? I don't know. I don't know. If, mm. I, if I can, I've, I've got you covered. I'm an old school <laughs> book, like open the cover, smell that old book. Yeah. Mm, library goodness on it. Yeah, I have the all the print copies at home. My mm. father-in-law had them, and he passed them on to us. And uh, so, but for traveling, 
the Kindle is yeah. very convenient. <laughs> I like the Kindle just the or the e-readers because I can read in the dark. The glow screen oh. yeah, exactly. goes a long way and making me happier. I have a thing with the feeling of paper, so... I'm with you there. I like being able to turn the page. No, I, I hate it. No? I hate oh, oh, you paper. don't like the feel of paper. <laughs> oh, I, I see. I hate touching paper. It's like one of my... There's like certain papers that are okay, but the ones that are that feel really... We're like primarily much. interested in just the top five centimeters, Dan, so we don't need to sample the core. Right Is here. it construction paper? That, yeah, construction paper sucks. That's uh, <laughs> interesting. Not look not not maybe, no. maybe. No, it's oh. started oh. pulling out. All right, that's fine. Out. Shake it out and put it away. We'll try again somewhere else if we think it's uh, a clay ear sediment. Um, it was clay. It's just like the it didn't the, uh, the valve on the top didn't quite do what it's supposed to. Oh, okay. I can try again, or sure. Yeah, if you think it, if you think it was a valve malfunction let's definitely try again let's uh, just poke uh, yeah. it in somewhere not where we poked in last time surprise there i don't know the core fell apart so maybe i'm no yeah it would have been a it disintegrated when it came out right yeah uh, i don't i didn't think it had any, any prayer of holding what it looked like to me no all right worth a try thank you it's worth a try. Can you make a note? Oh, maybe. Can you box out just a little? So. When we do do the cores, one of the things you can do automagically is change from uh, port rail to starboard bio box, like that. And uh, I'm gonna try. It's that camera is tilted up a little. We need to tilt it down just a bit. I can't quite see the, uh, if I porch out, I c or if I box out, I can see it, but we can't always do that because if we have a floaty sample in there, it's... Name the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I'm going to look that up. Then you can uh, box back in and uh, change the camera back to the rail cam. They're working on it. Have a good dinner. Can you uh, switch to jar cam and make sure we're on the flush and turn the suction on? Yes, please. Excuse me. And turn the suction on, clean that nozzle out. Blast it 100%. Roger. 
give it uh, about 60 seconds and you can shut it off. Right. We will Change bring the it back camera up. back. The jar should uh, clear up. Okay, where were those rocks? I got off, off the beaten path here. So I wish Amber was still in here. We got something in about do not watch the Amazon version of Wheel of Time. And I'm with you there. I watched 10 minutes of it, not a fan. Visually stunning, but not. I, yeah. They, they could have done more. They were trying to replace Game of Thrones, so just, yeah. I feel like there's so many series trying to do that. And I feel like even HBO, controversial opinion, I don't, I didn't like uh, House of Dragon. Yeah, they're trying to recreate their own fame, and unfortunately. Yeah, it wasn't very, I didn't think the characters were very well developed. The world wasn't as well developed. Roger. Yeah. I would be interested to read the book, though. I thought the I books were pretty good. I read a few of them. Yeah? I like them. Okay. Uh, change the camera back Cause to the I want to find another uh, good, easy to read book because, like we were talking about earlier, I've been reading right. Guns, Steel, and Germs, or Germs, Guns, Steel. Guns, guns Germs, and Steel. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really good, but it's kind of that's so dry. Great information. It's, but yeah, that's yeah. Dry. it's just so dry. I want something easy to read, something to take my mind off of like something not science for a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you like, I think we talked a little bit about. Luke by Christopher Moore earlier. Yes, it's a uh, it Again. actually just got delivered really? yesterday. Nice. I think you and then I love the Old Man War Again. series by John Scalzi as another kind of easy read series of fun books. We did read a book about Bigfoot last night. It was very entertaining. Bigfoot? Yes. Uh, there. Like, you when know you the, say we, do you mean like a children's book or like we like it was in, so, um, <laughs> you know, in like the big cupboard of books? Yeah. They had these two Bigfoot, Bigfoot books stashed back there, and it's kind of like an adult version of a Bigfoot book. Okay. And it's like Bigfoot is writing his own autobiography about oh, how funny. he's not dead. It's really, really funny. We have a lot of books that are really good stashed away in that little book bucket area. Okay, Wheel of Time. I got another online viewer who's saying that I definitely should read it. I think I will have to. Amazon, I will be shopping on you later tonight. Adam, how are you doing? Doing good. <laughs> Did you hear that you're not Coralie's favorite teacher? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's, uh... Sorry, Carly. <laughs> really nice to hear. <laughs> Technically, I've never been taught a class from you, so. All right. Mm. Oh, that's well, true. except that one class in the spring. But Seminar class. So, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't a teaching class. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I feel like I. Did that's cool. <laughs> the delegate. <laughs> it's not my favorite graduate student. <laughs> <laughs> oh, burn. Okay, so the question was, Adam, what is your favorite teacher, or who is your favorite teacher? Sorry. Uh, favorite teacher of all time. Jeez. Uh, I don't know. Probably my right. my PhD advisor, Kathy Cashman. I said my PhD advisor too. Yeah. Katie Kelly. I mean, you develop quite a relationship with your PhD advisor. You also probably hate them at times too, but uh, a love-hate relationship kind of thing. Yeah. 